I don't know how I can make contact with the author who posted his experience about the infamous Plankton Got Served episode from Spongebob. If he somehow finds my post about the experience I'm about to share, I have information that he might be interested in. Plankton Got Served wasn't the only episode that got changed, Puffabled, aka, Demolition Doofus, is a later episode that was changed as well. I was around the age of 12 at the time and heard from friends about children being picked to watch Nick cartoons, before they got aired. Scattered throughout the United States are various buildings that secretly belong to Nickelodeon. A few are taken here to watch cartoons. If you found one of these buildings, you wouldn't know it was associated with the studio, because the building's exterior looks generic like it's a clummy place to work at. As luck would have it, I lived close to one of these places. This is why I hoped to get chosen, despite being the age of 12. I wanted to get more info on what was seen over there, so I spoke to random kids to see if they were lucky enough to walk into those headquarters. Most responses resulted in getting looked at strangely. What are you talking about? Nope. Never heard of it. While my quest appeared to be futile, I eventually found some of the lucky kids. One refused to tell me what he watched over there, because it was confidential, but another kid, below my age, agreed to talk to me about his experience which he said was very disappointing. He told me about an odd episode of Fairly Odd Parents that was about Timmy Turner having to deal with growing up and eventually losing Cosmo and Wanda. During the middle of the episode, someone rushed into the viewing room and immediately ejected the tape. He told the viewers that someone accidentally put the wrong tape in and that this episode was still in development. He then gets another tape and puts it in. As it turns out, most of the episodes on this tape were ones already aired. When the rerun ended, a lot of children became restless. The man who had ejected the first tape told them that the episodes they watched were ones that weren't aired for a while. They were looking to make sure if it would be alright to air them again. Everyone went home without seeing a single new episode. I felt tired walking around the whole neighborhood and headed home. Two weeks later, I was in for an unexpected surprise. When I got up, I saw a stranger sitting at the table with my parents. He was a young man that I've never seen before. I asked who this person was and it turned out that this stranger was one of the workers from those headquarters. This had to be a coincidence, unless they somehow knew I was going around asking others about their experiences. As cliche as this may sound, I was invited to watch cartoons. I didn't complain, I was pretty excited about this. The next day, I was dropped off and saw a bunch of other children being led into the tall business structured building. My parents stayed in their car and waved to me, as I was also led in. They knew I was mature enough to handle myself. I followed the group and noticed a lack in younger children. This was surprising, because there were mostly people around my age here. The interior didn't look any better. We were led up a few stairs, until we reached our destination. The room was large, but mostly empty. Rows of chairs were lined up, as if the room was being used for a wedding. We all picked a seat and sat down. After waiting for about 10 minutes, someone entered the room. He told us that a surprise guest was here. Derek Iverson, walked in afterwards. I didn't know who this person was at first, but Derek is one of the writers for the newer Spongebob episodes. I used to watch this show a lot, it was a decent show at the time, when it was first being aired. However, I moved on from it, after the second season ended. Derek greeted and told us that he was working on making more episodes of Spongebob. He then told us that he had just finished the touches on one of these episodes and that we were all going to get a sneak peek. He mentioned how this episode was gonna bring major changes to the show. He said it was gonna introduce a new villain besides Plankton. He kept gloating on how much he enjoyed writing for the show before finally getting a disc and inserting it into a player. The show's opening plays out and the title card Puffabled pops out. The usual cheerful music plays during this. The episode starts with the yellow sponge heading for boating school, after he annoys Squidward a little bit. The yellow sponge quickly leaves and arrives at the school. He immediately finds Mrs. Puff sitting in a vehicle. He gets into this vehicle. Mrs. Puff doesn't look thrilled about this. SpongeBob begins bumping into other cars which causes Mrs. Puff to inflate. 
She constantly pleads with SpongeBob to stop driving, but is ignored. Without any reason, SpongeBob crashes into a lighthouse, while Mrs. Puff is completely inflated. The next scene shows Mrs. Puff deflated. She's on a hospital bed. SpongeBob is with a doctor who explains to Mrs. Puff that her inflation sack is permanently damaged and that she'll never be able to inflate again. Afterwards, the most disgusting thing happens. SpongeBob makes a cruel joke about this. I felt a little upset at this and it was made even worse when I heard Derek chuckle at this. This joke was kept in the final cut. This is where the differences between Puffabled and Demolition Doofus come into play. In the version that everyone knows about, Mrs. Puff attacks SpongeBob, but is quickly tranquilized by the doctor. Afterwards, she tries to get rid of SpongeBob by tricking him into entering a car derby which of course backfires on her. In the version that I was watching, Mrs. Puff began to cry. While Mrs. Puff started sobbing, SpongeBob says even more horrid things, things that I don't want to remember. All of these other jokes he made are very disrespectful to those who are really crippled. She doesn't get out of her bed to attack SpongeBob, the doctor tells the yellow sponge that visiting hours are over and he leaves. The next scene shows Mrs. Puff lying there distressed. A couple flashbacks play out which show all of the times where SpongeBob harmed Mrs. Puff. All of these flashbacks are from previous seasons, up to the very first episode that Mrs. Puff was featured in. Mrs. Puff then looks at the viewer, as if to break the fourth wall and begins changing expression to a creepy smile. I heard one of the children sobbing and getting rushed out of the room. The rest of us watched on, as SpongeBob relaxed on his bed. He begins snoring, as a shadow rises above him. When lightning strikes, it's revealed to be Mrs. Puff. SpongeBob wakes up, thanks to the lightning and notices the intruder. SpongeBob doesn't recognize his teacher and screams, as he makes a run for it. SpongeBob runs away in a first-person perspective. The whole house is completely dark and he runs blindly through the darkness. You could barely see anything. Eventually, it cuts out of the perspective and SpongeBob finally finds a lamp which he turns on. Mrs. Puff is standing next to him with a knife. Thank you for turning that on. Mrs. Puff knocks SpongeBob to the floor and she holds the knife right up to his nose. Just when the puffer fish is about to get vengeance, Gary intervenes and attacks her. She picks up the snail and throws him against a wall which causes his shell to shatter. SpongeBob believes his pet is dead and he cries. It's still his hysterical crying until Mrs. Puff tells him to shut up. The puffer fish begins describing the amount of pain that she's going to cause him. She describes how horrible it'll all be for him in detail and how this is the punishment that he deserves. Before Mrs. Puff begins inflicting harm to SpongeBob, she is knocked out by a tranquilizer. It turns out that Gary called the hospital after he was knocked into the wall. A group of doctors carry Mrs. Puff away in a straitjacket. SpongeBob looks at Gary and cries all happily that he's okay. SpongeBob hugs his pet in tears until it goes to the final scene. Mrs. Puff is now in an asylum, still deflated. She looks at the viewers like she did earlier on and talks to us, as if we were in the same room. SpongeBob is still out there. Until I punch him, I'll never be at ease. Next time, he won't be lucky. She laughed in a horrifying manner, as the episode finally came to a close. When it was over, I noticed only a few people left in the room. It turned out that I was one of the few that was brave enough to finish the episode. Someone I didn't know walked up to the DVD player and took the disc out. I didn't have the courage to ask if the writers of this episode were out of their mind, but he looked furious. We quickly left the room, and when we did, I heard the sound of a disc getting smashed which was possibly the only evidence of the episode's existence. I left as quickly as I could and my parents were still waiting out for me. As my family drove home, I stared into blank space. I didn't tell any of them what had happened and hid everything about it. SpongeBob is a complete monster, is he really supposed to be the good guy? This showed that he has no remorse for anyone and never thinks about the things that he causes. Unlike the edited episode that you've seen, Mrs. Puff doesn't inflate again. This whole thing with her getting deflated was meant to build up to her becoming a new villain. Thankfully, this was shot down. I found myself wishing bad karma on SpongeBob, does that make me a terrible person?
was feeling bad for Mrs. Puff a mistake. Thanks to what I've read, I know that I'm not the only one to see something like this. I feel a lot better now and this is why I'm sharing this experience. I don't know if there are any other episodes that are edited out there, but I told myself that I would never go anywhere near those buildings again.